Hi guys, welcome back to Tom Talks. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And today we are doing a movie review. It's been a while since we've done a movie review. It's been a while since I've been to the cinema. And to be fair, this cinema time was a couple of weeks ago. Feels a lot longer, but it was a couple of weeks ago. I only just got to it. I've been busy, man. What can I say? We are here with a review of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which is, of course, the sequel to Into the Spider-Verse, which was a fantastic film. One of the best superhero films I've ever seen. A near-perfect film, to be honest. We as Spider-Man fans have got some good stuff recently. We've got the game, which is over there. We've got the sequel coming soon, looking forward to that. I still need to play Miles Morales first. Obviously, the MCU trilogy, which are all very good films. And uh, then we got into the Spider-Verse as well. The less, the less said about Venom and Morbius, the better, though, eh? But did this film live up to expectations? It did. And then some. So this is part one of a two-part story which will end this, it's going to be a trilogy, apparently, which is cool. I'm happy for them to end it when they feel like it's necessary. I will quickly mention the behind-the-scenes stuff, like the animators being worked too hard and doing stupid hours. I don't agree with that, I don't like that, and I'm glad that they're delaying the film and they're not rushing it out next year because I feel like it will tarnish the quality of the product and it will impact the animators and the people on the team themselves. Film lovers, you know, we love our films, we love to sit in them, and this sort of applies to video games as well. We love our video games, we love our films, but the people making them, they need to be respected, they need to have proper working conditions, be paid properly in terms of the writers, of course, with the writer's strike currently going on in Hollywood. That stuff needs to be sorted out. So I will say that, and hopefully the animators with this film in particular, get what they deserve and get the proper amount of time to make the film. With that being said, in terms of the film itself, it's a fantastic film. It's as good, maybe better than the first one. I kind of I kind of see them as both like very good films. Well, amazing films, sorry, if you pardon the pun. The plot of this, the events of the last film sort of led to this multiverse thing and Miles gets caught up in it. Initially, Gwen goes back to her universe, gets caught up in a fight with a vulture from like the Victorian era. I made a mistake there. It's the Renaissance era, but oh well. And then she runs into Spider-Man played by Oscar Isaac who does a very good job, and some other spider people. So it appears I forgot quite a few names from this film. So Miguel is Oscar Isaac's character. She also meets Jess Drew or Spider-Woman, who's like the spider person that's on a motorbike who's pregnant in the film. They're both main characters. Uh, I completely for I forgot about their names because, I don't know, I'm an idiot, I guess. Yeah, both very good characters, both very enjoyable, both have interesting motives and motivations in the film. And then with the review. she becomes part of the team, and that sets the, sets the story's plot in motion. I won't go into too much detail into the plot because I don't want to spoil it for people. And, you know, it's still in cinemas at the moment. It's been out a while now, but if you haven't seen it, I want people to go out there and enjoy it. It's a great film, honestly. Go watch it. In terms of the characters, I think everyone here is really good. Miles is good. I think, you know, we get a bit more of his family dynamic as well, which I really like, and sort of him sort of having to fight between being Spider-Man and being a kid who wants to go to college. I like that. Gwen is in this, and we get a bit more character development for her, especially her relationship with her dad which is really cool. The other Spider-Men are all really good in this. The main ones we focus on are Oscar Isaac's character. The Indian Spider-Man gets a bit of time, and I love the stuff to do with him. 
And also we get Daniel Kaluuya's character as well. And I think I w I'm interested to see if we get to learn a bit more about him in the next film. His name's Spider Pope, man. God, I was I was really having a good afternoon this recording, wasn't I? In terms of memory. But yeah, apologies, folks. So they're sort of our main characters. There is other people in this as well. There is the villain of the piece who I don't think I've heard of them before. And I'm interested in how they wrap up that person's arc. It's linked to the first film and they develop it here. I could go into spoilers. I don't want to. I want you guys to watch the film to enjoy it. So the characters are all well good. The voice acting is very good. Everything sort of fits story-wise. I will say in terms of the story though, it's weird. Because this is a two-part where it ends and you're like, oh, okay. Because I remember I kind of realised the film was ended and I was like, hold on, this feels a bit weird. But it is a two-parter, so I feel like when it comes out fully, it will be like you need to watch it all as one film, per se. Which is a bit odd. It's a bit of a weird feeling, but I think it ends at a good point with an interesting cliffhanger. Multiverse stuff is cool. It's cool seeing loads of Spider-Man and Spider-Man villains. There is cameos aplenty here. They're great. They're enjoyable. You get cameos from movies, TVs, video games. And I like as well that they have like a little bio like, this is this person from this universe. I do, I do like when they do that. That's cool. I've got to say, the thing that sells this film is the animation style. It's beautiful. It's, it really is. Use of colour, the textures, the sort of changing of style and colour when certain emotions are being displayed and contrasting that with the emotions of the other character as in conversations. It's such a beautifully made film. And I got I gotta I gotta give props to the animators because they have done a quintessential job on this. And if they don't get nominated for an Oscar for that, I will be rioting. I'll be go I'll go to America and be like, You sure you sure? You sure about that, mate? You sure about that? Oscar geezer or girl? You know? Uh, the animation and the just look of the film is top of the range. It really is. It's one of the best looking films animated, live action that I've ever seen. And it just looks brilliant. It really does. Soundtrack by Metro Boomin. So last time I felt that like the soundtrack fitted and it worked. And obviously Post Malone, Swaley, Sunflower, most certified hit in the history of American chart now, apparently. So, you know, speaks for itself. But I didn't feel like there was not many other tracks I really went back to. The soundtrack for this, Metro Boomin has really done a good job. And I've gone back and listened to like some of the songs from the film. And they're good to listen to outside of the film as well. So I'd say the soundtrack is a bit better as well, which is good. And it fits the film. And uh, the end credits one with ASAP Rocky is really good. I really like that one person there. That's sort of my thoughts on the film. It's a fantastic film. It's a great first parter. It's beautifully animated. And yeah, it's probably my joint second favourite Spider-Man film along with Across the Spider-Verse. I think once this trilogy is done, I might go back over the Spider-Man films and sort of do a list because I haven't watched No Way Home since it came out. And I'm interested to see if my thoughts have changed now that there's no big surprises. And it will be interesting to go back to this, knowing that this character's here, this character's here. Do you know, do you know what I mean? It's, it's always interesting to look back on a film when you're not going in blind and you know what's coming. It takes it away from it and it's interesting to see if it still holds up. Overall, this is a great film. You should definitely watch it while it's in cinemas. If you can't, make sure you get it on Blu-ray. Do people still buy Blu-ray? I don't know, Sky, do people still watch Sky? Amazon, whatever it's on. But overall, I would give the film a very strong 9 out of 10. In terms of where it's lacking, 
I feel like because I don't know what's going to happen in part two and the way it ends, I'm sort of like, do I give this a 10? I, I don't know yet. But it's a great film, so go watch it if you haven't already. That's my thoughts on Across the Spider-Verse. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did you think it was really good? Did you not? Are you excited for the new film? Let me know. But until next time, folks, this has been... Another time talks.